Okay, this kind of um, question is kind of intermediate. They want you to calculate it, uh, the confidence interval, uh, but they don't make you do the critical value, and then they ask you some conceptual questions. So let's let's jump in here. So when we're when the population standard deviation is known, in other words, we're saying that sigma sigma is known. We can use the formula um, sample mean. This is our best guess at the population mean. Plus or minus, here's our critical value, it's called. And then we have what's called the standard error. OK, so we have um, really three components here. The, the mean is fairly in, uh, simple. They give that to us. So that's just 79.1. Again, that's our best guess at population mean. But we know it's probably not exactly right. When you take a sample, it's not going to exactly match the population. That's why we have a plus or minus. Uh, then a critical value. So here we're not going to talk about that much. They just give it to us. So let's use the 1.15 here. Uh, zero if you want. And then we need to um, calculate the, the standard error here. So this is the uh, 9. It's the sigma over the square root of the sample size, and it's size 60. So this part here is called the error. And if we type that into a calculator really quickly. Should get uh, 1.336. And then we're going to add and subtract that from the 79.1. So let me do that as well. So on the lower end, we should be getting 77.8. And then on the higher end, we might be able to figure this out. Uh, we're going to have 80.436. So that would give us 80.4. And what number goes here? Our, it says uh, enter the population mean. That's the thing we're trying to estimate. Usually we don't know what that is, uh, but they're, they're showing us. So notice the, the sample confidence interval doesn't necessarily have to be centered on the population mean. In fact, it doesn't even have to catch it. That's why we have a percent um, chance that, that we're likely to catch one or how confident we are that any particular one catches the population mean. Okay, over here, we do the same exact thing, except notice that 1.96. So everything stays the same, except that number right there is going to get replaced by 1.96. So that should give us 2.277, or I guess we're really rounding to the nearest 10. So let's just say 2.3. Again, this is for the 95%. This was for the 75%. So since everything else is the same, you'll notice that this number produced a larger critical value, which is going to create a larger range. In general, that's true. The larger the confidence, uh, the larger the range, or probably easier to think, the, the wider it is, the more likely you are to catch the population mean. The, those two will always correspond. So then we're going to subtract that 2.3 from our sample mean of, what was that, 79.1. So take 79.1 minus 2.3, and that'll give us 76.8. And then I'm going to take the 79.1 plus 2.3 to get 81.4. And then this, like before, they're telling us to put the population mean in there as 80. So that's how we set up the confidence intervals. Now we generate the samples. And you notice some of our, some of our confidence intervals catch that population mean. That's that red bar, and the blue bar. And some don't. Look at it right there. That one, that one missed. Um, 
So the, the higher the confidence, the more, in general, the more times that they'll catch the population mean. Okay, so when constructing any percent, doesn't really matter if it's 95%, um, we're not talking about at most that amount, and we're not talking about exactly that amount. We're talking about roughly that amount. Could be a little bit higher, could be a little bit less. In the long run, it will be that amount, but for any, any set number, it's going to be about that percent. So that, that's always going to be the case anytime, whether it's Z samples, T samples, one, two, doesn't matter what kind of confidence interval you're, you're doing. It's always, it's possible that it's a little bit higher or lower. And then here, um, so the confidence interval only gives an estimate about the population mean. It doesn't give anything about a percent of the data values. Uh, so that one is not true. Um, here, so remember, we had a sample size of 60. They're saying, what would happen if you take a sample size of 120? Well, let's think. If this number went from 60 to 120, this fraction would decrease, which would make our error smaller. So our, our confidence interval there would be smaller. So it would indeed be narrower than the current one based on 60. The higher the sample size, the more precise uh, you get with your confidence interval. Uh, and this is something we mentioned, the greater the level of confidence, the wider the confidence interval. Or the wider the confidence interval, the greater the level of confidence that you're going to catch the population mean. Um, we cannot say that there is a 75%. That's true. Um, it's either 100% that you caught it or 0% that you didn't. Honestly, this is a little mathematical uh, you know, twist of, of words. So don't focus too much on this. We're just talking about once it's already happened, it either has to have probability one because it did occur or zero because it didn't occur.